in the friend zone. Mom trying to be, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Views from the friend zone. Mom trying to be, I'm trying to reach the end zone. You think I'm kind of sweet and you want to be friends though? It's cool though. Just don't try to play me for no fool, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another edition of the View from the Friend Zone podcast. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Everybody who's out there getting drunk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Be careful out there. Don't get too sloppy, you know. We're also celebrating Women's History Month, and we have some special women in the building who's doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? Like always, though, I'm going to have everybody introduce yourself. It's your boy, Real Talk Moth. Hi, everybody. My name is Jasmine, and I am co-owner and chief operations officer of Ezra Beer Wine. What's up, everybody? I'm Ashanti Middleton. I'm co-owner and chief, chief networking officer of Ezra Wines. I am Taishimia, and I am also a co-owner, and I am the chief creative officer of Ezra Wines. So you know me, open shirt poppy. What up? <laughs> what open up? shirt poppy? Yeah. 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 In the summertime, you got the shirt off and the chain out, you know what I'm saying? Okay. With so the hamburger meat? Dope, right? <laughs> We're celebrating yeah. Women's History Month. We got three boss women who yes. who's running their thing. Welcome, ladies. That's their beautiful product right there. We're about to taste it, let you guys know, you know, how it tastes Ezra and all that. Vier. But, you know, yes. Ezra Vier, that's a dope name. They have a story behind the name, so they're going to tell us real quick. Go ahead. Well, we got the name Ezra Beer. It is actually the word reverse spelled backwards. And how that concept came up is we all used to sit down at my mom's kitchen table and just drink wine, have some drinks, girl talk, talk about guys and things y'all do. (laughs) Talk about girls. A little bit of everything. Things that y'all do to stress us out. And, you know, we just used to have a lot of fun. So we decided to come out with a wine product and we came up with the name Reverse. Um, as Revere from Reverse, so pretty much our slogan is throw your day in reverse with a bottle of Ezra Beer mm-hmm. or reverse the night. So a lot of the times most people are drinking because they're kind of stressed out, they're aggravated, you know, whatever, had a long day. we like, no, throw that into reverse mm-hmm. and have some Ezra Beer. Right. So that's pretty much where the concept Celebrate came life up. with it, right? right. It's not so about yeah. winding down, it's about kind of turning up. Right. Yeah. Turning Attacking. up, exactly. That's dope. Thank you. I mean, it, it's dope to see, you know, women entrepreneurs, but to, like, you know, tackle the spirits market, right? Is we tend to see spirits marketed as, like, men drink spirits or, or men own program, you know, companies. So to have women do their thing, I think that's kind of dope. Right, because ab- actually the wine um, industry is heavily saturated with white men. I mean, it is what it is. So for us to be in this industry is a little bit challenging, but we, I mean, we're ready for it. We've done the research. This was a seven-year project. And we just got bottled about two or three, well, three or four months ago. We just finally got the shit bottled and stuff because the licensing, per, the licensing permits, clearances that you need to get to have a beverage in a bottle, it's like, it's, it's, it takes forever and it's very costly and stuff. So um, we, we're, we're here. I'm glad to have y'all here. I got to sample this though. I mean, yeah, we definitely, yeah, right, we definitely right, ready? Going on. <laughs> Let's it go. It is St. Patrick's Day, though. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely want some. Let me show the bottle so everybody can see. Show the bottle for us. And, and it got a nice, you know, sleek, clean design to the bottle. So, you know. We wanted to have it so that it was appealing to both men and women. When you think wine, you always think of women. Like, oh, it's yeah. a woman drink. Yeah. So we created it because we all have three different taste buds. Ashanti's a cognac drinker. Jasmine likes vodka. I'm a tequila drinker myself. So we wanted something that was as strong. Yes, tequila. It's a good choice. (laughs) We're not judging today. We're not judging. So we wanted it so that you have three different palettes where it's going to smell good, taste good, and it'll appeal to everyone. Actually, the... the, um the vineyard that it's made at is in California, Madeira. Okay. I was going to ask where's the vineyard. Right. It's in California, Madeira. It's a 100-year-old vineyard. 
and the owner name is Demetrio. And he's been sure. rocking with us since day one, since we first called him about seven years ago when we didn't have any money. We were just asking prices. We were like, well, how much does this cost? We didn't know anything about this process. Yeah. He gave us a quote. He gave us some, some advice over the phone. And he was like, when you guys are ready, just call me back and we'll make it work. And That's seven dope. years later, we called him back. <laughs> Same thing. He's like, hey, Ashanti from New York, right? I was <laughs> like, yeah, we're ready, we think. Give us a new quote. And he sure did. Within like a day, he gave us a new quote on the whole process. It's not an easy process. Yeah. And we accepted the quote. And ever since, it's just been history. That's from there. Thank you. That is so dope. Like I said, we've been celebrating um, History Month. So we've been having women guests, you know, entrepreneurs and doing their thing. So you guys been aligned with that. So we're going to start the show as far as how we do topics, ask questions. And we just want your opinion and just your perspective on it. All right? Yeah. So. The first question, which is right up you guys' alley, is the cost of dream chasing, right? So what has been the biggest sacrifice you've made chasing your dream? You have ladies for that. So pretty much for me, the biggest sacrifice I made is not being able to move the way I want to move in terms of being a mom and pursuing other things that I'm trying to do and financially sacrificing and then sacrificing with still having to work my nine to five. So it's like a mental and a financial sacrifice all in one. For me, it's it's more or less time. Um, out of the three of us, like my job is more restrictive than theirs. That and the financial part, because it's it's just me. So for me, it's like you have to make those choices that sometimes you really don't want to make. Where it's yeah. like. Hmm, do I want to have a $5 coffee today? Right. No, I have to pay for something for S. Revere. But you get the joy in it. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, I look at it like, why make Starbucks rich when I can definitely make my company rich and take that stress off of my co-owners? Like, we're doing this together. And it's it's a good thing, but it's definitely, for me, time and finance. It's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough, especially when you're in a stage where you still have to keep the 9 to 5. Right? Oh, my God, yeah. And you have to separate the, the you know, you have to be good at work, but at the same time, you got to save some of that passion for your brand right. as well. Because mm, cool. we, we, we get stuck to be a good-ass worker, and then we're poor-ass business owners. And right, we're doing both. So we got to find a way to like keep that same keep that energy balance. for our own. Keep that balance, because it's easy to you know, push towards something you love like this, or what your dream, and then you kind of slack off on the mm. 9 to 5 or whatever, you know, because you're like, I don't want to be here, but... Oh, say it again. That's really what's going even, on. Even, even us doing the podcast show, you know, after after the show is finished, I got to cut videos for IG. I got to do promotions. I got to, and then you still got to get ready for work the next day. All right. So that's the saddest like, part. So you got to burn the candle from both ends. It's, it's really really tough. So guys, what has been the biggest sacrifice you guys make chasing your dream? Basically, just time management. And me being a new parent and stuff, it's very difficult to balance the two. And Congratulations. Just, thank you. I appreciate it. Doing the podcast and then just reaching out. I seen three sisters from Queens. I'm like, you know what? I got to hit them up and see what's going on. That was dope. That and was that's good very job. important. Just time management. And what about you? Um, it's, it's along the same lines. It's time, your family, friends. Um, you got to sacrifice something. You know what I mean? Or whatever you really pursuing. So... And I struggle with that too because I value that time. Um, yeah. A uh, little wait, a little while back when I was involved in um, multimedia corporation type of thing, they expressed like you know you sacrifice the time now with your kids or whatever you know so later on you can give them all that they right. need and you can spend it. But you don't get those moments back. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it's like I hear what you're saying and they're right. You do have to sacrifice that, but. What do you want? Do I want to have those moments? Why can't I have both? That's I, what I said. I, I think the biggest sacrifice, like you guys are saying, is time, money. And it's sometimes people don't understand. People don't see your vision. Right. No. So, you know, us doing the podcast shows and stuff like that, people are just like, you know, when you're s- missing events because you, you have to do your show or something, people are just like, well, you're not making money like that. Why don't you just cancel right. it? Like, nah, because this is my business, right? right? So. Regardless if I'm Oprah or I'm not Oprah, I have to handle with the same professionalism. Right. I can't cancel it just because you feel like I need to be somewhere right. and, and affect what I got going on. And that's and, why and, it works. And, and then until people can see, once people see you making X amount of dollars, then they have respect for it. But you don't open up overnight and make X amount of dollars. Right. You have to grind. Right. People, people sometimes don't acknowledge your grind. 
they acknowledge only when you shine. Then they be like, oh, I'm so oh, proud yeah. of you. Oh, you're doing your thing. And then they want to be around. But Not only that, we, I on. had somebody out the Woolworths that I didn't speak to in three years that they didn't, uh, practically cut me off like three years ago. Out the, we was at a photo shoot yesterday, 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 and yesterday. Had a photo shoot, and I get this mystery text message because I don't have her phone number or anything no more. And she's just look, uh, I think we need to rekindle and regroup and this and that because you see what the fuck is going on on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm weary of you. It's been three years. We had a little falling out. We were friends. We had a little falling out. It's been three years. Three years ago, we wasn't where we at now. And she's still friends with my wife. She's still friends with y'all and stuff. And she's still friends with my sister. So she sees at events and what's going on. So as much as I still love her because we had a relationship, now I'm weary. Like, all right, what are you, what are you coming around for? People do want to catch on the train before it's fully off the stop. Right, you know what like, I'm saying? So they see a little momentum, like, maybe humble. I can hop on now. She was yeah. mad humble yesterday. That like, black too button, and I remind everyone, <laughs> every phone has a black button. Right. Yeah. Use it. I've had the same phone number for 10 years, too, and all I just use that black number, that, yeah. black, that black button in a minute. Black. So you guys kind of been mentioning it, but the next question is, how has your social life and relationships been affected by chasing your dream? Um, I would say for me, it's, it's, um, for me, it's, I, I'm, an, I'm an only child. And for me, it's, it's hard because my parents, like, we depend on each other. My parents have been together. They've been married 40 years this year. Beautiful, and congrats. My best friend really is my dad. Like, that's the person when I have an idea. Like, even when we were coming up with Esther Rear, like, that's who I would call late at night or FaceTime or sometimes even go to their house and have a discussion. And he's like... I hope my daughter's like that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a good father, like the one I have, she will be. Shout out to Pops. And I love that you said that, right? Because a lot of times when people are successful, not to sound salty, it's always... Shout out to my mom and God. Dad don't get love, right? No. So dad gets love. I like to point that out. Listen, out the, the, my father, Cleo, is an amazing, amazing man. Like, yes. All of us. So it's like for us, it's like like he came by this morning and he was just like, you missed family dinner last night. I was like, I know. He was like, but I love the way he did it. He was like, but you was handling your business, so it's okay. Yeah, so it's okay. He was like, well, I'm going to see you later. And I was like, yeah. And even, like, he'll just randomly just call. But my friendship with my co-owners, it made us, it made me have a bigger respect for them as mm-hmm. businesswomen. Because mm-hmm. you see a different part of them. And they, yeah. they made me tougher. Yeah. And they made me more responsible in ways I was irresponsible. Mm-hmm. So that was better. It made me see who really was supportive of us, mm-hmm. especially in my family. And even in my relationship, it made me see, like, if your relationship can stand something or if it can't or how honest your spouse will be with you. Because some, some relationships struggle. And then it also made me look around, like, and see, like, what love really is. Yeah. Like, Ashanti and Atiqua love? Yeah. That's different. Like, that's what's up. Like, that right? Her, well, relationship woman, goals, right? Goals. That's, that's what's up. I, I, I just love it because you see, like, it teaches you what support is yeah. and then also what dependency is yeah. and what love is. And, and you know what? to expand upon the question like as far as how it affects the relationship because a lot of times when we're single or dating when we don't have a lot of time you don't have time for the WYD what you do in text messages right so how has that affected you being a mom and you know how has the grind affect your relationships (laughs) she has to move my ear for a second it's my fault I haven't slept in four days but um for me, my social life right now is non-existent. Um, I was recently engaged, had a baby, but that's not happening at this time. So mm-hmm. I'm single, and I'm a single mom. So right now, honestly, I don't have the time. I take relationships very seriously, and even if I'm dating, you know, I want to. I have a certain level of respect for even somebody that I'm dating. You know, I'm not too exclusive, but I don't have the time to put in that because right now I'm focused on me. I'm focused on Asher Beer. I'm focused on my kids. I'm focused on my other business. So I don't have the time for somebody because I want to put my all into you regardless. And I just don't have the time to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, so you feel, you're saying you don't have time for a relationship with regards to... And when I say I don't have time, I, it's not like, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time right now because I don't want to have time. I can find the time. Yeah. yeah, but right now, I've been in a relationship off and on for 18 years. Right now, it's about me. Right. So Ooh, I don't want to find that. That's time. powerful. You can always find it. Now, that's the, that's the good old excuse. Oh, no, I don't have time. You. No, we all can find the time, but I don't want to find the time. People get okay. it twisted when um, 
you say that though, you know what I mean? Because I, I can relate to exactly what you're saying. And you have a focus. Mm-hmm. You want to you want to reach your goal, mm-hmm. right? And that'll make you a better spouse too, whoever. But Absolutely. now you can't you can't really do that. So it's like you're not gonna try going for this thing knowing that it's destined to fail, right? Right. Right. And the I right sh- one can come along and make me find the time. Yeah. I'm just saying. You so know, we here. If, if he if he here and I'm here, <laughs> he he gonna make me find the time. That's all I'm saying. For, so Shanti, for me, you being uh, a, a married person on the panel, right? right? How has that affect your marriage? It has family? grown it. Like we what what we all agree with is that this Ezra will not impact us financially in a way that we just slumping down. And I swore and I vowed to my wife that this project won't infiltrate our finances at home. We live together, car no car insurance, rent. It won't infiltrate negatively or negatively impact my personal finances and stuff like that and if it does sorry Todd sorry dad I need to take a break because home comes first home comes first, and that goes for her and that goes for her if we ever have a time where we need a break because something ain't right at home or whatever take your break take care of home because that's the structure if my wife is not feeling something or if that starts to break down then as a is going to I'm going to break down I'm not going to be yeah. no good to my project so in regards to that it has grown our relationships we go out we socialize mm-hmm. my social life has boosted because I'm a big social butterfly I'm all over the place shaking I'm a mover and a shake up that's mm-hmm. how I describe myself shaking hands rubbing elbows and closing deals and all of that kind of stuff so I'm that person so this only enhances it it only enhances that. And that's good, right? Because I feel like a lot of times when we grind on something, if we don't have proper communication with our spouse or the person we're in, right. we can, they can feel neglected. Absolutely. But if they part of the vision, they see what's going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Number one supporter. She's a great supporter. It, 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 it grows things because they're proud of your hustle. Right. Right? And, and, and they know that in the end, when everything becomes beautiful, they'll reap the benefits. But it's not even about reaping the benefits. It's about supporting that person. Right. And Support. watching them grow. That's the key. Yeah. Yes. To fail when someone is chasing or when someone is, I like to say, building. Because if you don't always say, you don't have to support the vision. You have to support the person. Right. Because it's going to be some things where you may not agree with, but it's like, you know what? This is going to be for the betterment right. of you. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the betterment of us. The best advice I ever got was a person will never be as good to you until they're good to themselves. Right. Right. And if they're not good to their vision or their goal, like Ashanti said, they're, they're going to be horrible to you. Mm-hmm. It's I, not going to I hurt. always tell people like, my bad, I'll cut mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. I always tell people like, you can't expect someone to give you happy. You got to find happy yourself. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then you can accept what someone else is offering to give. If you're waiting on your spouse, whoever you're dealing with, your friends, to make you happy, you're just riding somebody else's wave. Waiting you got to be happy time. yourself. What are you going to say, Mike? Oh, no. Why you do bartending? I'm going to go to the last <laughs> time. I got something okay. to say. Okay. Okay. Um, what I find that along the same lines of what we were just discussing, when y'all have a goal, when anybody has a goal and you get involved with someone, it's best to find that they have a goal or something that's motivating them. Because I find that if they don't have something that's motivating them, something that, you know, makes them get up in the morning, something that they're inspired by, it's a little more difficult for them to understand your grind and support you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Have that same passion for something. They need something. That's something I got to talk about early on. Like, that's this is a fact my goal. because, like, they have to see that that win is our win and not just your win, right? right. Because uh, Cliff stepped out, but Clifford says, you know, sometimes people could be jealous of your lifestyle, and it could be the person you with, from within, that, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Because they don't feel like they're included in the vision. So they feel like they're on the sideline when it's supposed to be us. I could honestly say that my wife does not feel like that. And she's 100% in this, just like all the three of us. She's been with me. Me and her have been together for 10 years. 10 years, married for three years. She's been with me since before this vision. I also have a TV show, which I'm going to spread that to y'all. She's been there for that. And she's just like a super supporter. She's at all the events, setting up, handing out as Revere, smiling, pictures, all of that. She. Looking cute. <laughs> She's involved in everything, and I'm just so grateful. I know I have I have friends that are grinding, doing a photography or doing whatever, and they girlfriend 
ain't feel just not Challenge. feeling it. Just right. like yo, come home where you at? Mm-hmm. My wife do not do so that can to me. Can we get a toast for the black love in here? Right? Black toast to the black love. To black, black ass, ass love. love. Toast to that black ass toast love. To toast to <laughs> that black <laughs> ass love. Toast to you. So the, the last question on this topic, right? And you kind of gave a little um, advice to the world, but are you are you proud of the journey? What advice would you give a person on the fence of chasing their dreams? Nike, just do it. (laughs) The best advice I can tell you to do it is because this. My my god brother Akil, he gave me this advice. He said, when you work for someone, the salary that they give you is is basically what they're paying you to give up your dreams. Yes. And I at first I was like, but I want to do this. He was like, but why can't you do it self standing? Like why can't you do it yourself? Yeah. He was like, think about it. You take a risk when you order food from a restaurant. You take a risk when you get in an Uber. You you take an even bigger risk when you have a job where someone can tell you whether or not they're going to pay you for the next eight hours or not. They can walk in and say, this is over. Right. Mm-hmm. Why not control it yourself? Yeah. And it was just like, well, I, I, don't, I don't know. And he told me, like, he, he had a good job, and he walked away because he wanted to get into music. Yeah. I was like, but you got kids. He was like, but so what? I can't die with what I have in me. Mm-hmm. So when working with these two, and they called me one day and was like, "We gotta do this." I was like, "Wait, what? How we? Yeah. We're, we're gonna figure it out." And I was, yeah. "Don't worry about lucky. how." Just, I was, you I am the along nerd. The way. Is the nerd I am the. I have. It I seems have. like y'all balance each other out. Oh, yeah. yeah, you need a little bit of because it is a little shot. bit of everything. Because Ashanti, it's a lot of it. Everything. Ashanti is just like, "Oh, we go," and I'm like, and I'm like, wait. But I need a plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, yeah. and my backup got to have a backup. got to have a backup. But it's like, it's, he, 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 like that's just who she is. And then Jasmine is the balance. And then even in my relationship, when I was telling him about it, he was like, just listen to Ashanti. I was like, wait, no. He was like, you need to listen. She's right. going to make it. She's going she's gonna, to she's gonna help balance you out. I was like, Ty's a scared one. So yeah. every time we get an offer, are, everyone has a scary. Right, so I get I'm it. Not, more bra- not, to, not to not to call I'm you scary. Apprehensive. I'm the more right. thoughtful. She's the more thoughtful one. Cautious. Ty is cautious. Like, cautious. I gotta see every angle. Of yeah. Supporting me. I'm very, I'm very protective, especially of them. Yeah. If we're in a situation and something's offered, I I read their faces. I'm the most outspoken one when it comes to where it comes to be aggressive and negativity. So when an offer comes, I'm like, yay, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> I need some background like research. Yeah. I want to know who you work with, how She's that turned out, and what, you, yeah. and what you're and bringing. The colors, and the color scheme of things. Yeah, everybody needs that. Everybody needs yeah. that. I mean. <laughs> if you know about, like, it's a, it's a class I took on, on your colors or your personalities. You're a green. Like, and what does green mean? Green, green somebody, somebody who has to have things laid out step by step. And look at her cup. And look at her jacket. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not even <laughs> I'm Her cup you. and her jacket. <laughs> Blues are more off the cuff. I think like you, just let's do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're more turn up. Let me so what, advi- it. what advice do you have, Ashanti? <laughs> advice that I have is just do it like Ty like said, but be, be strategic. Because you don't want to, again, mess up home. Like, that financial hardship would be the first thing, first reason why your relationship go downhill. And we, I don't want to put that stress on my wife. I don't want to be like, well, baby, you know, I don't have my portion of the bills this month. Can you just hold us down? And, and who knows, it might get like that at some point. But I'm trying my darndest so it don't get like that. Yeah. Like, right. I don't want to be like that. As of it is a great sacrifice for us, but I'm not trying to have it overtake my relationship and just cause all types of fuckery between me and my wife because we can't pay the bills and all that. I'm not doing that. So you got to be strategic with what you do. So just do it with strategy. That's my whole outtake on it. Right. My advice would be to go out on a limb and take a risk. Yeah. I would also say do your research. This is the age of information. Anything you need to know is out there. Use your 10 degrees six degrees or two degrees of separation. of separation and figure it out. I will also
also recommend find a mentor. Look for people who are doing what you're doing and reach out to them. Ask them questions. You know, don't be scared. Like, you need people like that to tell you, nah, I wouldn't do this, I would do this. You know, save you maybe some money, some assets, some stress. You know. We didn't have that. We we kind of just now finding a few mentors. Right. Like we just got into a shop called Happy Cork on, in Brooklyn on Buffalo. Shout out to Happy Cork. Shout out Cork. to Happy Cork. Owner Atlantic. We, like her name is Buffalo. Sunshine. She's the owner. It's a brand new store. They only open for two weeks now, mm-hmm. and it's a, a beautiful black owned wine shop. It's just mm-hmm. everything in there is exclusive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe two right. percent of the alcohol and wine in there that you recognize. Everything else is just exclusive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So. So, right, it's I'm dope. I'm spending your dollars in the community. Right. right. Spending dope. In black businesses and because that's how we grow. The owner, mm-hmm. she gives us advice. She helps us out. She gave us some good ass tidbits and right. she got so much more for us. So, we just grateful for her. We met someone named Celeste Beatty recently who started her own beer. She's black too. In the year 2000, she started brewing beer in her house and then she turned this shit into a fucking multi thousand dollar business. You understand what I'm saying? So she's, it's 2019. She's in, what we asked her when we, when you said, we said, Celeste, how many accounts do you have? And she said what? She said, I don't even know. She lost count. And I said, I cannot wait for somebody. Cause right now somebody asks us how many accounts we, we have. We can say it. We have one and we have two on the way. Right. We know. We, she has so many that she's, she's like, well, like, my accountant know. knows, but. Yeah, I don't know. And that's, like, that's good. Successful in business. We'll tell you this though. There's no such thing as a loss. It's a lesson. It's, it's a, a lesson. lesson. It's a win or exactly. a lesson. That's it's it. You gotta, you gotta learn. You know what I mean? From whatever happened, any shortfalls or anything that you feel like maybe a setback. Right. You learn something from it, so you don't consider it a loss. You know what, what, I mean? what advice I would give? And I, I, I read this somewhere. It was just like you know, people always think that you have to be so exclusive for you to be successful. Right. But if you go down the bread aisle, there's wonder. There's something else. The store brand. Like that. Yeah. store brand. Mm-hmm. Every cup of tea and everybody, everybody has a different cup of tea. Everybody has a different niche. So go out there, do your thing, add your twist to it. I don't worry it, about other But don't be afraid stuff. to enter a market that's already there. Right. That's because there's market advice. share for everyone. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And right. people like new Shout out to Soul it's Exchange right Bistro. Soul Exchange is the first restaurant that purchased our alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, I, I approached the owner. Her name is Eve, with, along with her husband, Mark Benjamin. Your, your brand people are going to love you. You guys are dropping names <laughs> Because we're so appreciative, you have no idea. For somebody to take a chance on you is so humbling. And, you know, it's just, we're just forever indebted. We're super, super humble. That's one thing I love about us. We're so humble. Like, you wouldn't know if I had a million dollars in my bank account or one dollar because right. I'm just the same. That's right. just how we are. Well, as as Revere speaks for itself, I'm I'm a red right. drinker normally. When I drink wine, I normally drink red. But we got you. Like you feeling that? Right you you feeling like it? it? I yeah. And it's we got that red good. for you. It's coming. Don't okay. worry. Okay. It's called Ezra, 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 Ezra Red. red. Ah. Cool, cool. All right. So um, we're gonna move on to the next topic. The next topic is dating outside of your comfort zone, right? So the I'm next question is, juicy. have you ever dated outside of your comfort zone? And do you understand what that means, dating outside yes. of your comfort zone? <laughs> so go ahead, bless us with the response. I have, no, I have one time. One, it was the only thing that I, I can say is be open to it, but also um, don't lose yourself in it and just stand your ground respectfully. But I, I, I'm going to stick to what I know. I mean, what I have to say about this, I ain't got no type. I, I, I bad, bad is the only thing, thing. You ain't got no light. I never had a type. I dated a, a Guyanese girl, Spanish girls, black girls. I never had no. T- Sorry, babe. This is raw. But all right, she rolled her eyes like the eyeball right way back. But I don't have a type. Like I just, I, I date what I'm attracted to. It don't even matter. Like I don't have no type. I ain't what about you, Jasmine? You ever dated outside your comfort zone? I feel zone? like, for me, dating outside of my comfort zone is dating somebody that can teach me something, that can show me something. So it's un- it's uncomfortable for me because I'm super independent. Like, I'm the one that I'm the nurturer to take care of everything. So I look up to people that can actually give me advice and teach me something. And it's rare for me to find a man that's a, at the, that's a boss. Not that they aren't out there, but...
but somebody who's on my level or higher that could teach me something. And it's weird for a, a man to, to, to know the life that I'm in and to be able to give me advice. Like, that's just, like, it's a little uncomfortable, but in a good way. So it's Jasmine's so attracted to that. Yeah. She's so attracted to that. Like, a man that could sit down with her and talk business. Mm-hmm. Like, she, ooh, that's what she is. So, that. that's out of your comfort zone, though? Because that seems like more in, in your comfort zone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, makes her, it makes her, like, ooh. You know why? Because something that's inside of your comfort zone is something that you don't have to put too much thought into. It's something that's easy and simple. So, it's easy for me to deal with a guy who, I could teach him something. Because I know shit. You know, guys don't know <laughs> a lot about credit and business and real estate and wine. And that's easy. I could talk to you all day. I want somebody to talk to me. I want somebody to teach me something. So I'm like, oh, damn, I didn't know that. Oh, daddy. Oh, hey, daddy. <laughs> I didn't say that now. Oh, oh, oh. You I said real estate. You said so, credit. So, so, Mike, have you ever dated outside of your comfort zone? <laughs> you said Roth IRA? Speaking on a whole uh, other level. When you said out of your comfort zone, I was just thinking like somebody you meet in a different setting than you're accustomed to or starting a relationship. Outside of your regular circles. Outside yeah, of your man. Choices. I, I met a chick on the wrong number before. That ain't nobody's comfort zone if you ask me. But it was cool for the time. That's random, though. I mean, have you gone out of your way and dated outside of your country? I mean, nah, not really, I'm going to say, because I I don't really, um, because to to say that I'm going to find somebody outside of um, my comfort zone is tough. It's a a risk, a risk that I don't know how many willing to take. I mean, I I dated the same kind of girls before I got married so many years. I'm Haitian. So I also was chasing like Haitian girls throughout college and stuff like that. It just didn't work work out for me. So I stepped out of my comfort zone, dated someone. Shout out to my boy Mike, cause he introduced me to my wife. But hey, what is she? Oh. What is she? She's Puerto Rican. But That's I, what I, I have had. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Wait, I say that to say this. Oh shit! Look at that confusion. That is my most successful relationship. His marriage. Oh, he made it sound like he had her first and then he passed her along. He said, like, what? He's like, okay. What kind of podcast? Yeah. What kind of freak shit? You know, sometimes love is outside of what you're regularly used to. Absolutely. We kind of tend to date the same people, recycle over and over again. Not the same person, but the same, same type, type of person. person. And then we kind of wonder, like, well, why is it not mean? working? Because we're comfortable <laughs> being with the same circle. But me, what about you, Cliff? Have you ever yeah. dated outside of your comfort zone? No. I usually I usually know what I want. I don't decide to date on my com- out of my comfort zone because I'm just going to waste her time. So I usually, if I know what I want, I just stick to that. So when you go to a restaurant, you order the same shit, steak and steak and fries. Same stuff. <laughs> I like to keep it simple. No headaches. No, it's nothing wrong with that. Try something different. It's nothing wrong with that. So try something the different. The next question on this topic is: Do you feel love has escaped you because you keep dating in the same circle? Sorry, but those who don't it. have love or, or love hasn't worked. Hey, let me speak on this. <laughs> okay. Oh. On this. He started with the A. Because, you know what? Because I can honestly say um, um, it's not always the other person's fault. I take a little bit of credit, you know? Yeah. I want things a certain way, so sometimes um, I act a certain way, and that might have caused a problem. With I'm not saying everybody I dealt with wasn't yeah. good. They just wasn't good for me. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a matter of the things that I've done along in, in conjunction with who they were as, as people. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I can really say. Like, I think it's the best advice I got from my – I look to my parents when it comes to love and relationships. My mother yeah. said, your father's not who I met in seventh grade. She said, "Is it? it's a few things. Are you willing to grow with him? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to grow against him sometimes? Because you can't always see what you're doing when it's affecting you, not just your relationship. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, it's at the end of the day, could you be so happy in your situation that you can lay with yourself? Because regardless of what's going on in a relationship, you still have to be able to lay, you lay within yourself at night. Even if mm-hmm. they're next to you, yeah. you, you have to be comfortable so I feel like you don't lose love. It's just whether or not you feel that they're worth growing with, growing against, yeah. and and I can still lay within myself within the relationship okay. at night. So Jasmine, do you feel like you know love could have escaped you because of dating in the same circles? Absolutely not. Um, I'm never gonna give up on love. I don't care if I'm 80 years old. You know, I'm 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 always.
always going to feel open to that. And I feel like everything that I've been through, it was a lesson and had to happen. I've grown from it and I've took, taken that lesson and I haven't made the same mistakes in the relationships. So whatever happened in all my relationships that didn't go so well, things that I didn't do right and they didn't do right, I made sure not to repeat those same mistakes. And it's constantly going to be new lessons because it's constantly new people. If I'm with you, you're going to teach me different things and you're going to know the different things than if I'm with somebody else. So I'm, I'm never going to feel like that, you know. Right. So let me close this topic out with a more superficial question. And the question is, do you feel love could be waiting for you outside of your usual attraction? Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Elaborate. Yeah. Elaborate. In high school, all I well, it, it, it's nothing wrong with this, but I was attracted to Spanish girls. I was, okay. in, but keep in mind, I was in high school. You That's know, trouble. young, you doing your thing. <laughs> I was attracted to Spanish girls. I love, like, I think Latin women are beautiful women, you know, and that's just my attraction. Like, it, it is what it is. But she's nowhere near Spanish. She got natural hair, you know, black ass skin. I found my <laughs> wife. Okay. And I found a love and attraction for my wife, despite what my usual attraction is. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? All my girlfriends before her was Spanish, Dominican, and Puerto Rican. So, found my wife, and I love her to death, and I value her to death for her beauty and her naturalness and everything. Yeah, go ahead. Sit in your glory, boo. <laughs> For everything that she has. Praise I love her. that. Praise I love her. my wife. Praise so it. I can completely relate to everything you just said. I did have an affinity. I got a, like a Spanish in my list. Like I'm like one sixteenth somewhere. So that that little thing. You gonna represent that quarter? Uh, yeah, you know, I think that it, it was inside of me and it drew up some kind of attraction. But I think, you know, the Spanish women are fiery. And I, I in my younger years I liked the drama. So it was like that might have caused an attraction because I knew they was going to give me that. Right. But I've learned that's no good for me. You got to learn what's no good for you, you know. And I feel like, um, though my sisters have drama too, they're more grounded and I need, you know, that kind of support, you know what I mean? So I used to always um, eat vanilla ice cream now and eat chocolate. So, Ooh, so, to, to bring it back, I'm saying, <laughs> but, but you can be attracted to right, but I don't have just one you can type be attracted of I know the attraction, attraction but I'm still but there, the but question it's just is not more for saying, me. The question is more saying because let's say you always look for certain measurements or certain kind of woman. Can, do you feel like you can ultimately settle in for love with someone? Who doesn't necessarily meet your immediate You're speaking attraction? Measurements now, so we talking like I'm, I'm just I was just using <laughs> that as, as as far as like you know your your usual attraction, physical attraction. Can you fall in love with yeah, someone that's just I, I, that? Definitely. Yeah, it, it, it definitely can because sometimes you can't see past it. I'm more or less of a type of person where it's like physical is at first, but I have like weird things that when I see it, I'm like no, and it could be like this. Like for me, it's teeth and hands. If your teeth. <laughs> It's not together. Mm -hmm. And your hands are looking a little crazy. Can't even get to the conversation. <laughs> Forget what, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just not, it's, 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 it's just, it's just not going to work. I've, I've heard that. I've heard You that. have your Women thinking. have these specific yes. things right? that they exactly. check out, like, you think, oh, yeah, I'm looking good but, or whatever. But wait. Whatever. But it be some little shit that they're like, that but, I have date, but I have <laughs> dated someone that yeah. had beautiful hands, but had, the teeth was a little crazy. But I loved him, and it, and it worked out, and it was a yeah. beautiful thing. You did it outside your comfort zone. That definitely was outside my comfort zone. Y'all had some dates <laughs> to the dentist. She was like, oh, I did take him. I, so did. <laughs> I did. I did. What about you, Cliff? Can can you can you date someone that's outside of your usual attraction? I mean, I'm a married man, so before the, I was off before the market. That, yeah. Okay, before I was off the market, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can't just look at being attracted to somebody. If, if the personality is dope, that the, the chemistry, chemistry is everything. Now, yeah. Because right? yes. you could be with somebody that's super dope and just superficial, but then if the, the chemistry don't leave, you would like, all right, I can't You're do right. this anymore. Yeah. You, know, you want somebody that could, you want somebody that's going to balance you at all times. <laughs> yeah. They just, yeah. It's, it's just the mindset that I just, you just can't take. But if you can make me laugh and we can have a good time and I could, you can tell me about myself, we yeah. good. If yeah. not, this, if you weak, you got to go. Uh-uh, ignore yeah. her. No, that's a beautiful yeah. thing that you said that my wife always says that if I couldn't have made her laugh, it was a wrap. That was what that's sealed the, best the deal. Part, that's the best part because your your spouse is ultimately supposed to be your best friend on a different level. Yes. And these are my two best friends. And I can literally laugh so hard that I'm crying right. between the two of them. Yes. So I got that. It took a while for me to get that. People say, oh, your 
your spouse should be your best friend and best friend. It's like I got a best friend already. Yeah. I don't need the, I need them to be my lover, or my companion. Mm-hmm. They don't have to be my best but friend. What is it, yeah. But what is a friend? But, but what what is a friend? That's everything separate. Yes, that's and your that, intimate yo, and your soul's a little bit different. It's true. I under, I didn't understand it then the way I understand it now. Yeah. I was married before. I'm a, I'm a divorcee, and I realized that though I loved my wife and she loved me, we weren't friends really like you couldn't like you, you weren't friends like you that. couldn't have that laugh you couldn't be yeah, silly with we the right now, do, do you feel like you have better friends now Time during the show. Oh, 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 therapy oh, on me. Jazz, it's about to get. Oh, he's no, good. Like, that's that's not shit. Nah. You have children. Yes, no, no, no. And you guys no, are good friends I told you now. that. Yes, we are. That's what I'm saying. You guys are better friends now. We that's the only point I'm saying. I wasn't Dr. Phil and you. I always feel like that, though. Because you always go there. But now, now that we're not together, we are much better friends. We have a friendship like where that. we couldn't have it when we was together. Um, but to get back to that earlier point, which I was saying, like the particulars you look for and stuff. Yeah. Um, I was a superficial dude at one point, you know, oh, let me see what that body looking like. Ooh, she cute. Blah, blah, blah. But now I'm more like, okay, I want to hear what you got to say. Yes. At one point, I didn't even care what she had to say. If she looked good. I was like, woo, you know what I mean? Now I'm like, let me speak to her. Can I have a conversation? Open that box, ma. Yeah. <laughs> Close what that mouth. What about that you guys, man? Can, do you think you could find love waiting outside of your usual attraction? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm a little weird when it comes to relationships. Some things that people think are their flaws, I'm actually attracted to. So I don't want anybody to ever make a decision for me. Like, can you, you give know, an example of that? Like, okay, like her with the tooth. Like, let's say your teeth aren't crooked. I might find that kind of sexy. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might be insecure about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, or you glass chewing. Now you might have your mouth do no, your teeth. Okay, how you gonna Wait, 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 wait. Extra tooth, for a little extra roll, extra a little tooth, tooth right here. Uh, a little crack I might tooth think or it's not, I mean, yeah. even that, if yeah. you got a gap, Ooh, you know. Thing, boy. I, I, I think that's, you know, but that may be something that you're insecure about. But yeah. I might like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You might burp a lot. You know, no. I might that's think it's sexy. funny. Like, I don't, you know. Do I, you like taking I like on projects? Stuff. Like you like yeah, you man, like you, project. You about to do it like that? DIY. Like, you know, this way, do it yourself. Well, she likes let the me projects. answer your question. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't like taking on projects, but I just I like substance. I like complexity. Like I yeah. like certain That's things. Deep. Like it's just fun and it's weird and it's quirky and it's just not. Can you see the normal. beauty in everything? Are you one of those hmm? people who can see the beauty in everything? I'm one of those people yeah, who can see the I beauty really in everything. Am. So I, I like really that. am. That's what's up. You know. All right, so we're going to move on to the last topic. Last topic is a little serious, but since it's Woman History Month, I want to discuss this and have women give their opinion. And it's, are we ready for a woman president? Like yes. In, in, 20, in 2016, we had Hillary run, and, you know, Hillary didn't quite win, but she made a good run to it, but certain things held her back. So the next question, do you think after the Trump America, we're ready to vote for our interests again? Yeah. First of all, when were, we, when were we ever not ready for a female president? When were we ever not ready for a black president? Who set those standards? Right. The only difference between us and them is that we can have babies and you can't. We have boxes and boobs and y'all. Like, that's the only thing that it sets us apart. Mm. So when were we ever not ready? You know? No, but black people have always been just as qualified and skilled as everyone else, but we were slaves right. for a while, mm-hmm. and then we were treated as three-fifths of a let person me, and things like that. So I'm just saying, do you think that's the climate of America You mean, now? is America ready yes. for a woman? I'm going to be honest. Yeah. I feel yeah. that minorities are ready for a woman president because in the minority communities, the women are the pillars and the strength of the that's family. Mm-hmm. I don't care which way you put it, which way around it. Even when you think back, it's like, I'm going to grandma's house. You have a grandfather, but it don't matter because your grandfather will tell you what did your grandmother say. Yeah. And, and <laughs> even in my family, like my grandmother, God rest her soul, Winola D'Ampert was the pillar of our family. Like whatever she said went, even to my father, who was her son in law. So I feel as minorities, we are ready, but we're so divided that we don't, we're not open to see the different things about it. America as a country in a whole is not because in their, in their world, a white man is dominant. He is everything. He is the smartest. He is the leader. He is brilliant. Not yeah. realizing that he is also self-destructive to some things at some times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so they That's don't dope. realize that sometimes Preach. he is the, the thief in the night that is destructive, that is hurtful, that is, he's tactful. Yeah. But we 
do we are ready in my opinion for for a woman pregnant and I want her to be a minority what do you think Ashanti I think that if if um, Michelle would have ran against Trump she would have won you think so Yep. Michelle is popping and everybody yeah, to us to, to us. us but, but I, I think at the time Trump is people trash. were so certain people were so ready to be done with Obama and Michelle having that relation would have hurt them at you the think time. So? I got now that we things. now that we, we went like people, people went against their Obama. interests, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people who voted for Trump went against their own interest to vote for Trump, Trump. just to avoid voting for Hillary. Yeah. Yeah. I got a, I got a few yeah. things on this and it's going might seem a little contradictory because I feel like with us having Trump in office, we're ready for anybody. anybody. Exactly. Anybody. So, exactly. You know, transgender, male, female, whoever. Because uh-huh. Trump is a wild card. And if he can be in office, I think any female would do not only just as good a job, but much better job. Much better. My thing is, like you said, Ty, um, can we tell him? We yeah. call him. Okay, <laughs> watch him. Um, our community, the minorities, we yeah, we've been ready. Um, America as a whole is not ready. Mm-hmm. For a man to do and say the things that Trump has done, even before he was president, and, and get still away have oh. so many women, probably mostly white women, vote for him, they themselves are not ready. They don't that's, even support that's themselves what I'm against the way their they own should. interest. You know what I'm saying? I how you feel about it, Jasmine? I feel like the future is female. The future is female, no, baby. Sure, it's the present, though. Sure, it's the present. The future is female. I feel like I feel like I feel like we need, we need to kind of wake up again, right? Because what gave Obama room, you know, even though jo- uh, George W. Bush, like after he left the um the office, I, I started to get a little more respect for him because he showed a little more open mindedness, and that's why o- Obama. No, but that's why they became no, no. no, that's why they became cool because <laughs> because once once Bush left the office, he wasn't he, he didn't have to play the political part. So no. But what I don't like is that everybody trying to run for president that like Kanye for president, Oprah. For, I mean, I'll vote for Oprah. I think Oprah if I she not, ran, I would not. She oh, has no political. I would fucking vote for Oprah. Oprah. Oprah's a, wait, Oprah's a wait, people wait, pleaser. Wait, wait a She's minute. a people pleaser. Wait, wait, I don't need a people wait, pleaser. It wasn't as, even about the people candidate. pleaser. I want you to have some sort of political back. Trump like, don't. What every a lot of people oh, voted for Obama. Trump don't. He's an actor. Let's put it out there. Before I and he's a real estate mogul. Honestly, say. I research him because I'm not going to vote for you, number one, if you're a puppet, as Jasmine said. Number two, if you have no political background. True. You, you, Oprah, make money. Great social person. Great talk show host. Great about it. But what do you Stick to your day job. That's the Trump has. That's the reason people but voted for Trump. Because, because y'all about to vote for Kanye. Politician. And he was saying That's what why. America wanted him to, to his, say. Y'all about to vote for Kanye. He felt. But I will honestly say, like, I didn't know who to vote for. I just know I was not voting for him. To be honest with you, I voted for Hillary as default because I didn't want to vote for Trump. I really wanted Bernie Sanders. So Bernie Sanders is making a run again. We'll see how that happens. That was my they say Bernie so, Sanders is going to kick the bucket soon. But Trump is not that young anyway. But anyway, so to, to get back to it. That's what they say. What do you feel like Hillary could have done different? She had a few scandals going on too, didn't she? Like, right. So I don't know. Honestly, I didn't really care for her. So just because you're a female, I'm not gonna support you. Like, I'm just not like that. And just because you're a male, I'm I'm not not gonna support you. I didn't really care for what she was doing. I felt like she was trying to appeal to us, and it wasn't compassionate. It Pandering was kind of like, lot. yeah, I didn't like that. So I just I saw took bags, my so I, I took my mind. Kind of yeah, I took my mind out of the whole presidency presidential candidacy period and stopped watching it after a while. And I honestly didn't vote for anybody because I don't give I don't give a rat's ass what it is. If I don't like you, I'm not gonna vote for you. I'm not gonna vote for the lesser of two evils or the best option that there is. I'm just not gonna fucking vote. Right. And I didn't like anybody. Right. So I agree. Like, um, so what do you think Hillary could have done better? Um, I, honestly, I'm not much of a political person, so. Pat. <laughs> I don't, I'm just not. So the reason why I felt Sadly. that she could have done better is because I felt that she may have learned from her mistakes. 
So what I did was I researched them when they wanted for candidacy. And I also saw, like, she had a political background to when she was in college. And it, was, it wasn't it was like she just hopped on the train for when it came to minorities. Like, she's marched. She's held protests. She's held rallies. The only thing that I did not know is that, I don't know if I'm correct, I can't remember, but the bill that was signed, which called a lot of incarceration. The super credit uh, uh, mass incarceration men, bill, yeah. Her husband did sign. Yeah. And she did not go against it. And it was for two reasons when they asked her. Like, they asked her before she even ran for presidency. And her response was the way that it was portrayed of the Reagan administration, of how crack was going. It was just, if we lock them up, they can't get out. Not understanding the bigger picture that you see in the 13th century. How you're Amanda destroying Hubbard, lives really and families and the residual. Because it was going deeper and bigger. But I respected her because she admitted that mistake and she never hid from it. Yeah. But she forgot her biggest thing. She was looking at us and she thought that we wouldn't vote for her because she figured that we would go for Trump because he's about money and real estate. She forgot her own people. She forgot the white woman. And that's why they voted for him yeah. because he talked to them. She thought she had them in the bag yeah. so she catered she to other people. She, she yeah. that, 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 about that, you, that, that makes sense. And you can say that she might have missed out on the white women, but I think her biggest flaw um, in her, you know, running um, her candidacy was she forgot the Midwest. Yes. That's the thing. They, they felt forgotten. That's all. Then a lot of them don't even support Trump like that, to tell you the truth. But they are, I saw this documentary and it showed, um, it's talking about the big corporations, Amazon, Google, as the you know, thing just fell through with them coming to New York and their office or whatever. And it was like, what about the Midwest? That, that would really uplift them and give them, you know, what we already have. Like, New York City already is making money, millions and millions of dollars. We don't need that here, but they need it there. And what Trump did that was smart, if ever there's something he did that was smart, he catered to the Ohio's, the Nebraska's, the little towns that nobody cares about. He was there with his rallies, and he got all of those votes. He, 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 he ate up the swing votes. votes. And that's, and that's the thing. what, that's what he said. Oh, Trump is ugly. We need those with the Electoral College, the way it's set up. What do you feel Hillary could have did differently? I mean, a lot of people thought Hillary was staged. She was just advocating too much for the African-American community. She was kind of an alimony, and the church. Right. She was just doing <laughs> things. Yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out to Southside again. But <laughs> she was doing a lot of things that was staged, and people could see through that. You know, it was nobody. And then it's hard enough for a woman to even guys that didn't believe in Trump voted for Trump because they're like, I don't want a woman to run. And then when they see you doing stage stuff, it, it wasn't going to happen. So a lot of the things she was doing was too much. Especially and then people, like the, people read through it. The hot sauce in her bag, it was like... like you, got, you got racism, and then you got sexism. They're, they, they're pretty close. Like, yeah. men, you know, just as much as we feel we our race gets discriminated against and we get hated I, I, I on I think men you guys all kind of... In my opinion, yeah. summed it up correctly. Hillary just didn't really appeal to the masses enough. She she catered to certain groups and not all groups. She didn't necessarily. I think she went on. I'm just going to kiss butt or or attack Trump and not necessarily. I didn't really know what her platform she was. She underestimated him. Like, did you really she underestimate? Him. Yeah, she just felt like, come on, he's yeah. he's stupid. Yeah. I don't really gotta pay attention. Yeah. She didn't sell me on anything. I kind of felt like, okay, you know, I knew her background a little bit, but she didn't sell me on anything that made me feel like, wow. So the last question on this topic is, is there a woman past or present you would like to see as president? What is her, um, she just got hurt. She's a little bit older. No, um, Ruth Gens, uh, she, I know Ruth um, Gettysburg, Ginsburg, she would be a great, to me, she would be someone that I would have elected to be pregnant, president. Also, um, you may call me a little crazy, but Angela Davis. Mm. Well, she, she's, she's gone. gone. She's gone, but is this, uh, yeah. Oh, but she has the president. Yeah, has the president. Has the president. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see Michelle Obama. I love what she stands for. I love what she does. I like her rawness. I like how she's so authentic. I just feel like she's a dope woman, and um, she has a lot of valuable points that she hits, and I feel like she actually genuinely cares. Yeah. You know, you could feel that. You could feel that compassion, and, you know, I would like to see that. I think that would be dope for my daughter to grow up and see, 
You know what I'm saying? And I, I think it's dope. I, I agree with you. I would like to see a combination if she was a little bit younger. I know this is ageism. Maxine Waters and Michelle Obama, Obama together. Ooh, as a, that'd as be a, a powerhouse. President, and vice president. Mm. That would be so dope. That would. Wait, but you know Maxine we have ageism. Wa- you know? Maxine Waters. That's the reclaiming my time. Wasn't no. Maxine? That was a. a Love a single, right? That's what oh I'm that's Maxine. My that's God. God. Somebody name is Maxine Waters on some TV show, but oh for me, for me, I would choose Obama again because I liked him. But you know, got to be a woman. About a woman, he said a woman. A woman. Michelle that's Obama. Right. Obama. Okay. okay. Obama. Her name is Obama, she right? Run the show anyway. Right? I would choose Obama because I liked Obama, and yeah. I think that they have the same values and stuff like that. Yeah. And plus, what she's doing now and her women stuff, she helped kids. She do a lot. She just has a whole movement. Her I, book. I, yeah. I, I would choose. I don't Obama. know the political rules, but I felt another thing Hillary could have did is she should have made Bill her VP. No, she should have married him. She should have married him. Her husband? Yeah. Nah, that's too close for comfort. I don't want to work. It's so much yeah, it's scandal. They would have brought that whole Mm-mm. thing up again. That would have destroyed her. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't. What's the Leave Bill at home. On the Breakfast mm-hmm. Club. Angela oh, Angela Rye. Rye. Yes. yes. Angela, Angela Rye. Rye. Yeah. She get my vote all she day. Yeah, she's so popping. All day. What about you, Claire? Angela Rye. I definitely, um, I would like to see Michelle because I would like you having Obama again. Yeah. You know, a lot of things she would do, she would relate to her husband to get some input. But, you Absolutely. know, um, that's it. Maybe just Michelle. Give it a try. That's it. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to cut y'all down, but Obama didn't really do a lot. Oh, my God. Oh, one of those people. Hey, he was I'm happy. Cup. He was he a was black president. A thing. He inspired. That's the most he did in the presidency. Now I can look at my he son is. and say, you can be president. Even being black, you can be president. After but Donald outside Trump, of that, you could tell what did he do? Be president. What did Obama he, do? No, he what? did a lot, but you, you, but you start people, searching for a whole nother show, man. Yeah, a whole he, show we talk I will about say that. this, like Jasmine said, he did a lot. He did a lot, but of he did up. a lot of stuff for immigrants. He did a lot of stuff for the LBGT community. Mm-hmm. He did a lot of stuff. He didn't do as much stuff for the black community as people would have wanted him to do, but he still did a lot of things. He did a lot of stuff for prison reform. He opened a lot of doors. He did do he had a, a lot, lot to clean up after I would, I so, that. But exactly. you, that's the thing. He had so much stuff to do, and it's, it's other things that's going on in the world. But I feel like if he would have had another four years, he could have tackled a lot of more things I for just, our community. One thing I respect about Trump, I just, I, I was, oh yes, this one thing I respect. He is gangster. He don't care. He, he doesn't care. care. And I wish He's Obama would have been like that. Once He's you get in the office, he, has, he be like, listen, bro, you do what you do, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's his fault that a lot of federal workers was um, in furlough and wasn't getting paid. But he was like, I want my wall. You ain't giving me my wall, they ain't getting paid. So the, was that? The wall's not even you know logical. I, mean? I know. The wall is not he logical. He care, and I love that about a man in power. Don't y'all women love that? Y'all women love that, too. <laughs> man, I'm just like, no, anyway, I don't care. This is what I'm no, doing. No, it's, it's a difference shit. between <laughs> having respect for somebody and fearing somebody. And I feel like a lot, he intimidates a lot of people, and they have a level of fear, but they don't respect him, though. Yeah. So but they say fear lasts so longer than love. That is the mm-hmm. end of this episode. It was another great episode. Thank great you guys episode, for coming ladies. through. Thank you. Thank, Thank y'all. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now you could now you could take the time out to obviously continue to plug the brand and let them know when they can pick it up, where it will be available in the Tri State area, and different ways that they can get it in the future. Yes, so we are currently available selling Ezra Vere out of Soul Exchange Bistro and Wine Bar. That is in Jamaica, Queens, well, Queens, New York on 208th and Jamaica Avenue. Soon we'll be available at Happy Cork, Brooklyn, which is right on the corner of Atlantic and Buffalo. Atlantic and Buffalo will be in Happy Cork, which is an exclusive um, high-end wine bar. We'll be available there within the next couple of weeks. And we're going to be at Essence Festival 2019 yes. for the Black yes. Wine yes. Experience. Big moves. The vibe always. Yes. Big moves. Also, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram, S. Revere Wines. Um, you can also, so we will answer you. Um, and we can let you know our up and coming events. We do have an event next week with the Zetas on March the 24th. From and, and where will it be at? 12 to 3 p.m. at Slope in Brooklyn. Nice, nice. Nice. Village, y'all want to shout anything yeah, out? Yeah, I want to shout out um, these lovely ladies doing their thing, bossing up. I really respect y'all. Um, listen, 
I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I drink. I know good wine. I know good alcohol. This is good. All right. Nice. Thank so you so much. Them, you know, um, another one of my sisters doing their thing. I told you I was gonna shout out my homegirl Jolanda. She works now with Wyndham. Anybody trying to go on vacation? Go Always. See her. She working out of the New Yorker. You can get yourself a free vacay. Um, she'll let you know how. Hit up Wendy. What's her you name? Jolanda. Um, Jolanda. <laughs> Um, who else I want to shout out? Um, I just came back into town. Shout out my peoples in Orlando that checked me, looked out for me. I had a great time. Um, and then all my brothers and sisters doing their thing. You know what I mean? How about you, Claire? Um, shout out to these three sisters for coming on the show. You know, as um, black people, we got to support each other, right? I, I, I didn't know I'm from Holland. Well, I seen there was some Jamaica queens. Yeah. I hit them up ASAP. Uh, you know, uh, I sent them two videos, let them know, see what is going on. And then, you know, friends become family. I always welcome to come and promote the brand. Exactly. Thank you. And, you know, and, and as and it grows, we'll we want and you to come back and let us know the as updates. As we grow, we want and y'all to I yeah. want you to ask y'all a question, how many accounts y'all have? Y'all be like, I don't even know. I don't even know. You're sticking that to the universe, right? Yeah, I want to shout out everybody. Thank you. Everybody supporting us. Reviews from the Friends Zone as the podcast. We're growing with the podcast of the people. We love to have entrepreneurs, people who got something going on, people who look like us, who don't look like us. We just, the biggest thing is supporting people who have a dream, right? Right. Because that's the biggest thing. So many times we're stuck in a life that we didn't plan for and we stopped dreaming. So we want us to continue to dream. Anyone who's looking to come out and promote what they got going on, you know, reach out to us. Like I always Mm -hmm. said, you know, we have to go out there and chase our legacy because it lasts longer than our liabilities. That's and we right. out. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.